last presentation for this morning is uh, from the Dr. Ali Reza the Ermagam. The, he is the assist, assistant professor of transport, transport in the Richard A. The Ruler, Rula the School of Civil and Environmental Engineering at the Mississippi State Uni University. His research focusing on using uh, emerging data and technologies and developing innovative solutions in the domain of human mobility, community resilience, and the urban informatics. His presentation is titled the Envir Environment Satisfaction Induced by Built Environment, um, Travel and uh, Personal Factors. He will share with us his findings on how and to what extent the in environment satisfaction of travelers is uh, in, in induced by the built environment, travel, and personal factors. Dr. De Umagam, let's welcome him. Uh, thank you for the kind uh, introduction and, and saving the best for the last. <laughs> But uh, joking aside, I'm amazed by the diverse uh, presentations and the topics and the usage of the dynamica in, in different uh, topics. I know you're hungry like me, and this is the last presentation before lunch, so I'm not going to keep you uh, waiting for lunch. So uh, Americans, uh, on average, spend 43% of their lives uh, for out-of-home activities. So we. Uh, we use different modes of travel, including walking, biking, uh, public transit, um, and uh, auto, and including that, you know, also uh, micro-mobilities uh, to reach our destinations. That includes uh, work, education, uh, uh, grocery shopping, eating out, leisure, and recreation. We might uh, accompany with someone while we are traveling or conducting activities, or we might do it alone. We also might be engaged in some secondary activities, including listening to music or talking with friends while we are conducting our activities. Regardless of the mode of travel we choose or the activity we conduct, we do it alone or with someone else or we engage in some secondary activities, we expose some satisfaction with physical environment that we have. So we might feel satisfied while we are running on treadmill, or we might satisfied while we do it with someone else outdoor. We might uh, not satisfied while we are staying home and prefer to be out of home uh, and do some recreational activities. And also we are impacted by travel modes that we do while we are uh, conducting our trips. Be satisfied using car, not satisfied using public transit, depending on the environment. And also that, you know, there's an impact at the personal level. You might uh, share the same environment, but because of the different personality, you might be satisfied with your work environment, and someone else in the same work environment might not be satisfied uh, with, with that uh, work environment. So we argue that uh, the, the environment satisfaction is actually a function of built environment, travel, and personal characteristics. Uh, and we, we try that, you know, to answer main questions of what are the contributors of environment satisfactions. In particular, we try to see the built environment correlates of environment satisfaction, travel characteristics correlates of environment satisfaction, and finally, the personal correlates of environment satisfaction. Uh, our study area uh, is uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul uh, metropolitan area, including uh, six uh, regions. Uh, four uh, urban areas and two uh, suburban areas. And I know you are all excited to know that what data I use for the analysis. So here is a surprise. Uh, we use the Dynamica uh, application uh, to, for, for collecting the data for uh, seven consecutive days uh, that people participated between October 2016 and October 2017. So they reported their travel characteristics and activity characteristics, including their mode of travel, the activity they participate in, their accompaniment, uh, and uh, also that, you know, the secondary activities that they are engaged. In addition, that, you know, to environment satisfaction and uh, well-being that uh, Kirti talked about that uh, in, in previous uh, uh, presentation. 
We also augmented the data with some built environment variables known as 5D built environment variables extracted from a smart location database. And also that, you know, uh, we were uh, provided that, you know, the personal characteristics again collected by uh, a smartphone uh, dynamica. So the variable of interest here was that, you know, how satisfied were you with the physical environment during the trip or activity episode that you conducted. So we deal with a binary variable of satisfied and not satisfied here and develop the random effects uh, panel logic model uh, over that, you know, the sample size that we had. So here are some of the results. I tried that, you know, to group those results here. So the first group is the built environment variables. We found that, you know, the design, uh, diversity, uh, density, distance to transit, and uh, also the destination accessibility is statistically significant in our analysis. Uh, the, the impacts uh, are different. So, for example, the population density is negatively correlated with environment satisfaction. It means the chance of environment satisfaction is lower. Uh, for people that, you know, they conducted their activities and trip in the more denser areas. Uh, the, the diversity is a, is a positive impact there. Uh, the design, not surprisingly, specifically for pedestrian-oriented design, we found that there is a positive correlation with the likelihood of environment satisfaction, uh, while uh, the, the road network density has a negative uh, association with, the, with environment satisfaction. It means that the chance of environment satisfaction is lower uh, for our sample uh, when they expose to more uh, road network density. Uh, distance to transit, as we expected, uh, has a negative correlation with environment satisfaction. So if you live in areas or you conduct your activities and trips in areas uh, with higher distance uh, to, to transit stations, so you expose the less uh, environment satisfaction and uh, accessibility here in terms of transit access to employment in 45 minutes shows a positive uh, association with environment satisfaction. The second group is the travel characteristics. Here, two main groups of type of activities, including that, you know, leisure, eating out, education, work, uh, personal business, and shopping. Uh, and also that, you know, accompanied by different people, including friends, a spouse, family, uh, or children. We also have a variable called physical activity. So if participants reported that they were engaged in any types of physical activity during their activities or trips, we capture that too. So interestingly that, you know, we found uh, out-of-home activities uh, are negatively correlated with, uh, with environment satisfaction, except the leisure and recreation. It means that, you know, when you participate in leisure and recreation activities, you typically, or on average, feel more satisfied with the environment. But accompaniment, on the other hand, shows a positive uh, correlation with environment satisfaction. It means that if you do not travel alone, uh, or conduct your activities alone, so you're more satisfied with your environment. And uh, absolutely that, you know, when you engage uh, some physical activity in your activities and trips, uh, you are more satisfied with your environment. We also have a few uh, personal variables we found that significant, uh, the ethnicity, uh, African Americans, Asians, and also the age. So we found that, you know, African Americans and Asians uh, reported less satisfaction with the environment in our sample, uh, while older people reported more satisfaction, environment satisfaction in our sample. So uh, the analysis that we have done was on over uh, 11,000 uh, uh, observations that they were grouped in uh, almost 360 uh, people. So to conclude uh, and to answer the three questions that we had and, and I brought up into introduction is what are the built environment uh, correlates of uh, environment satisfaction? So we tested uh, all uh, 5D built environment variables. We found that, you know, density, diversity, distance to transit and uh, destination accessibility is significant but the sign of them were different, some of them positive in fact, some of them negative in fact. The highest positive association uh, is the deviation ratio of household workers to job uh, as a measure of diversity, uh, and this is followed by pedestrian network uh, density. The least positive association uh, is transit access to jobs in, in, in a 45 minutes commute. 
uh, we had the highest negative association uh, is the uh, road network density, which is followed then by population density. And the least negative association is distance from the, uh, uh, from the population weighted uh, to the nearest uh, transit stations. The second question is, uh, what are the uh, travel correlates of environment satisfaction? Uh, we found that you know, primary out-of-home activities are negatively correlated with environment satisfaction, with the exception of leisure and recreation. Uh, companionship is positively correlated that, you know, with, with environment satisfaction. Specifically, we find that you know, companionship with friends has the uh, highest positive association, and companionship with children has the lowest positive association. And finally, in terms of the personal correlates of uh, environment satisfaction, we found age and ethnicity uh, statistically significant. Uh, all their participants reported the most satisfaction with their physical environment, uh, while Asians and African Americans reported the less satisfaction with their physical activities, with the physical environment satisfaction. We did not find any uh, statistically significant difference between female and male in an analysis, but that was something that you know, we were curious about that to look. Uh, so there is a practical uh, conclusion here too, before I open the set for questions, is that you know, when you do eat out uh, activities, so your environment satisfaction is less unless that you know you do with someone else. So while you are getting ready to head for lunch, so please, I recommend highly to use a body system, find a friend, and you know you you will be more satisfied with your environment. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ariweza. This very interesting uh, finding. Any questions from the audience? This one behind you, Kwan. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, wonderful presentation. It is a very interesting study. I was just wondering for those correlates uh, to environmental satisfaction, have you tested any interaction or, or combination effects? So for example, I was just like so intrigued by the negative correlation between shopping <laughs> and environmental satisfaction. I was wondering whether it was moderated by like, for example, density of population or anything like that. That's a really interesting question. Uh, uh in fact, uh, I, I did because first I was surprised by the different impacts of density and accessibility. Uh, I, I was aware that you know these two are positively correlated with each other, so I expected that you know when there is a higher accessibility, typically you should have more uh, density there. Uh, we, I, I tried that you know some interaction factors for density. I didn't report it here, but. I did not find a lot of interaction variables significant. The most significant ones was interaction with population density. And it, specifically with, with shopping and eating out, I found them. So the interaction that I tried was 5Ds uh, variable with that, you know, the act with different types of activities. Some of them were significant, but not all of them. Just that, you know, to, to avoid the complication of the uh, interpretation here, I didn't report them. But I would be happy that, you know, to. Uh, to bring it up for you. Seems you are not hungry. So. <laughs> They're hungry for information. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like this is a fantastic presentation. So you know, hungry for knowledge. Of course. Um, I was just curious to know. Like this is such a great finding, but why the data collection is limited to seven days? Like what would happen if you collect the data over like, let's say a month or? So I think like, it's like a trend that I'm seeing over all these presentations. The data collection is limited either for 14 days or seven days with the Dynamica. I think for Dynamica. Uh, yeah, but, like, yeah. but uh, so th there are a lot of that, you know, uh, as far as I'm aware, there are a lot of that, you know, limitations to collect the data. So you need that specifically to engage a person and ask a person to be involved with that smartphone app. So that's a lot. And specifically, this data uh, that, that was collected was among the first collecting that, you know, the data uh, with a smartphone. So you, we, we had a lot of, or the team, I believe that, you know, they had a lot of difficulty, and I was uh, aware of that when I was studying here, too. So they had a lot of difficulty to recruit people, right? And finding the people to spend longer amount of time uh, to participate in that. So you needed to provide more incentivization which makes it that, you know, more uh, expensive. Or people 
not going to participate in that. So you are going to deal with that, you know, less amount of participants there. So at least that, you know, these are two main reasons that uh, I'm thinking of it. And also that, you know, one week typically is a representative of a periodic of the activities that you do during that, you know, a month or something, if you call it that. So previous studies on travel behavior showed that, you know, absolutely one day is not a good representative, but one week is a better representation of the activities that people do during the uh, course of a longer period. If Wonderful. I think that's a great leeway to our uh, conversation in the afternoon. So uh, thank you, to Reza, for that wonderful presentation. <laughs> well, I'm impressed, impressed with the, the presentation this morning, the very diverse and the very interesting presentations. So let's uh, give a final uh, round of hands for all the speakers this morning. Thank you.